doing this play in the middle. Hello, my name is Martin Reed. I'm a maritime archaeologist in Plymouth University and I'm also chair of the Plymouth Archaeology Society. And we have been carrying out a rescue dig in Commercial Wharf. So we're in Commercial Wharf just to the south of the Mayflower Steps and uh, we're excavating part of the original Vitlin Yard in Plymouth, which started in 1654 and was providing uh, barrels of salted beef, biscuits and bread to the Navy from then until 1830 when they moved to the Royal William Yard. Underneath uh, the warehouse of the Vitlin Yard, we are finding a lot of pottery from the Mediterranean. And this relates to, and they're rubbish that's thrown on the site when they were building the uh, quay and it relates to the fishing industry in Plymouth. So the fishermen would go out to Newfoundland in the spring, uh, catch the, the fish on the Grand Banks of Newfoundland and then salt it. And then many ships would uh, travel directly to uh, Iberia or the Mediterranean to sell their fish. And when they came back, they would bring um, cargoes of salt to be used the next year but also cargo, cargoes of fine porcelain, uh, sorry, so fine pottery um, uh, from the Mediterranean. So we have some of that pottery here. And this is uh, a shirt from a, a large platter that, that was made in Florence in Italy. So we're getting Italian uh, ceramics, painted ceramics, uh, from Florence and Pisa. Uh, it's very plain on the back, but on the front, um, it's very colourful. Um, but remarkably, we've also got another Italian artefact, and this came up earlier in the week. It was a, a digger on her first day, and she normally manages uh, a computer project in the university. And she found this. And this is, uh, technically it's called a star bead. And these were made in Venice, in Italy. So either in Venice itself or more likely in Murano, which is an island in Venice Lagoon. Can you just spin it around please a little bit. And it's made like they made a stick of rock. So you have layers of different colours uh, of glass um, rolled together and then they would draw it out like you would a stick of rock. So this is the cross section we have here making it look like a star which is why they're called star beads. And complete necklaces of these are on display in museums around the world. But they've also found other fragments of these from other excavations in Plymouth such as Dunkey and St Andrew's Street. And in the recent Mayflower exhibition, uh, they had one of these on display. So this is 17th century, but it comes from a layer that we can date to about 1668. So it was obviously broken in half from a necklace, maybe, and then they threw it away. And it ended up being deposited in a layer which we think was laid in 1668. We don't know when this was made or when it reached Plymouth, we just know when it was deposited in the ground. What's the story behind the loss of that one, I wonder? Well, How yes. Did it happen? Who knows? Yeah. Somebody was not very happy because <laughs> this would have been very expensive. Really? Oh, right. It came all the way from uh, Venice. Yes. Uh, we also, even further, we have a few fragments of Ming porcelain uh, plates or dishes. We don't have cups, but they're only tiny. It's about 1% of the sherds of pottery. So this is the finest wares uh, available and the wealthiest would have had them. So Drake had some Chinese porcelain. Uh, but we've only got very small fragments of these. But they've come even further. Um, there's well, a pipe there, isn't there? Yes, we have this clay pipe which came up this morning. So 
Um, this is going to be dated to between 1640 and 1680 by its style. And um, you can see it's got a spur on the bo bottom. Often they have uh, the maker's mark on there, but this, this early they don't. But you can see it's broken at the end. And you can see the bowl in there, um, f still filled with soil. Another one of these we had, which uh, was filled with soil, and we smelt it, and it still smelt of tobacco. So if I have a sniff of this, nothing, <laughs> sadly, but the other one did smell of tobacco. So this is part of what people were, their recreation, if you like. It's an amazing thought. That was smoked very probably by a Plymouth person. Oh, yes. Oh, Back definitely. Definitely. It may have been made in Plymouth. Really, right. We've excavated two pipe clay kilns in Plymouth over the years. None as early as this, but clay pipes were being made here in Plymouth and they found them in America on some of the colonial sites. Would that have had a bigger stem? Yes, that... well it's obviously broken. Okay, right. So it would have had a bigger stem, but I don't know how long they were. I'm not a clay pipe specialist. So what have we learnt so far from these works then? We've got a lot of artefacts here and outside. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff, but very uh, you know, in a one or two sentences, I know that's not easy. What have we learned so far? So what we have found is this is from before the Vitlin Yard. The um, Royal William Yard, before the Royal William Yard. Before the Royal William Yard, we had the Lamhay Vitlin Yard. But underneath it, when they built the key wall, they, they threw rubbish behind it. And we are finding the rubbish. And this reflects the day-to-day -day lives of people of Plymouth. So we show the plates that they ate off, uh, the dishes that they cooked in, uh, the beads that they wore, the necklaces that they wore, the pipes that they smoked. We have butchered animal bone to show what they ate. We have oysters and cockles and other shells. We even have a couple of chicken breast bones. So it's showing the lives of people at this period. It's fascinating. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much.